the last video in this series is on errors and conclusion. So you're nearing the end of the project right now. After this, your last step will be to actually present, to make your presentation for your project and publish and share your information. Um, the website will give you information on how to do that. But today we're going to talk about errors and conclusion. So errors, when we do an error analysis, what we're doing is we're looking at the experiment and seeing what we would do different the next time. And again, every experiment's a little different. So you think about what went well in your experiment and what you'd like to do better the next time. So when I look at my data, the thing that really sticks out to me is when I designed my experiment, I didn't really take into account the weather because the weather can definitely affect how my dog is willing to walk, um, how far my dog goes when we do walk. Um, so one thing that I'm going to take into account is the weather. So I may, so when I do this again, I will only walk on non-rainy days. I feel like that affected my data a little. Another thing that I would make sure I did differently is um, be a little bit more conscious of the accuracy of my numbers. So I was pretty good with minutes, um, but when I actually did the experiment, I found that sometimes I wasn't so good at keeping track on the stopwatch and I had to go back and estimate. So. Um, when I did the experiment, sometimes I had difficulty with the stopwatch. And had to estimate some numbers. Another thing that I wasn't super careful about is the time I walked my dog. I walked him about 10 minutes and about 20 minutes, but I really didn't record these times. So next time I would use a stopwatch to record the time that I walked my dog. And again, these things would be added to the procedure in the next time. Or maybe I'd find a different way of recording how long the dog followed me around. The very last thing I noticed is I only had eight days of data. So I had limited data. Repeating this would give me more accurate results. So those are all things that could have caused error. There's certainly more, and every experiment will have slightly different errors. So other things to think about are, are your measurements as accurate as they could be? Should you have done it longer? What changes would you make if you did it again? So those are things to be mindful of. The last step we're going to do is the conclusion. And the conclusion is going to be two things. First thing, did you support your hypothesis? So if I look back to my hypothesis, I thought that the longer the time I walked my dog, um, the more time, the less time he would follow me around. That is, in fact, what I found. The more time I walked my dog, the more time I walked my dog on the X, the less time he followed me around. So when I walked him down here, he followed me around a shorter time. So in this case, I did support my hypothesis. Now, if my data had not agreed with my hypothesis, 
I would say I did not support my hypothesis. And then in my conclusion, I also want to tell why this matters. So the reason this matters is knowing this, allows me to take better care of my dog so that he's less anxious. That concludes this video. Make sure that you turn this into your instructor by the due date and please be in touch with any questions you might have.